Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Now, this is one of those bi-directional words of God in Scripture through Paul. He's talking to the Romans. He says, you, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. But he's clearly asking God to do it. That's what I mean by bi-directional. These are very powerful words. I really encourage you to use them in your family, in your friendships, to look into people's eyes and call on God to do things for them. May God, I gave this to my wife just a few days ago as she was going to the doctor for a procedure. I, I, I stopped her at the door, put my, my hand on her arm. I looked at her and I said, may the God of hope, Noel, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. That's very powerful when you do that eye to eye with somebody you love. So notice first, well, let's call it a prayer. So in his prayer, he identifies God, made the God of hope. Now that probably doesn't mean the God who has hope, though you could say, I suppose God has hope if you take out of hope all the uncertainties that we often have. But it probably means the God who, who gives hope, the God who overflows with hope. Just a few verses earlier, I think verse 4 of chapter 15, it says, everything written in the Old Testament was written for our instruction so that by the encouragement and steadfastness of the scriptures, we may have hope. So everything God has ever said in the Bible is written to give hope to Christians. And so he calls him the God of hope. And then he prays this, may he fill you with joy and peace. And here comes the key phrase, in believing. And when he says in believing, you know, don't you, where the joy and peace are coming from. That is, how is the flow happening from the God of hope to my heart with joy and peace? The God of hope is filling with joy and peace in, through, by believing. So if you lack joy and peace, the, the, the battle point, the point of warfare where you're engaging is this in believing. Are you believing the promises of God? Because that's how he ministers hope to his people. So joy doesn't just happen chemically, <laughs> magically. The Holy Spirit is here. He is working this, but he is working it through faith. So we believe in the promises of God. Through the believing comes joy and peace flooding into the heart of the believing saint from the God of hope. And one last phrase, and it really puzzles me. It says, so that, so may God fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope. Now, the reason it's puzzling is because when you believe in the God of hope, what you're having at that moment is hope in the promises believed in. That's what it means to believe a promise. If you believe a promise that good will be done for you tomorrow, that believing feels like hope. That's what hope is. It is, it is faith in the future tense. Faith is the hope of things to come substance of things to come, which is hope. So hope and faith are almost identical here. And yet he's saying that when we believe slash hope in the God of hope and joy and peace flood our heart, the result is you will abound in hope. <laughs> so here's my effort to make sense out of that. How does hope become the result of being full of joy and peace, which comes through faith, which hopes in the promises of God. And my answer, 
goes back to chapter 5, verse 3, where he says, We rejoice in tribulation, knowing, rejoice, joy and peace, we rejoice in tribulation, knowing that tribulation works patience, and patience works a sense of approvedness, and approvedness works hope. So your joy in tribulation was rooted first in the promises of the God of hope, so that it began in hope, but as you are proven in those experiences of life and joy and peace rise up instead of bitterness and anger as you're tested with trials, you have more hope according to chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. And so probably when he says, may God fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope, he means, I want the God of hope producing hope and faith which yields joy and peace. I want all of that to have an overabundant effect on more and more hope. So I picture the Christian life as a kind of spiral up to, into ever-increasing hope, which leads to ever-increasing joy and peace, which leads to experiences with God in trial, which lead to more hope until we get to the place where we walk by sight and not by faith anymore.